Mark to God. Genesis 17, verses 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 and 2. And when Abraham was 90 years old at night, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. Verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, I will multiply thee exceedingly. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 11. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 11, then the Lord God of your hearts made you a thousand times so many more. Yes. Yeah. And bless you yeah. as He has promised you. I was praying for this meeting. The Lord led me to Deuteronomy 1 verse 11 that one sign that you will see. After this time, is that he will multiply you a thousand times. He said, Pastor, what do you mean? God can bring coin, money, out of the mouth of a fish in the river. God can make a donkey to speak a human voice. That God said, he will multiply someone here yeah. financially yeah. a thousand times. Yeah. I don't know how much you have today. If you have a thousand dollars times another thousand, how much would that be? That would be a million. As if you don't have the house. Yeah. 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 The passage you read in Genesis 17. Where God told Abraham that He is the Almighty, made me to do four things tonight. Number one, I'll define what our theme is all about, and then we'll move very fast from there. So, the first thing I'll do tonight is the mission of times. You don't talk about Almighty, but I'm talking about mighty. So the first I want to define is mighty. Mighty means having or showing superior power or strength. When there's an exceptional strength, exceptional power, that person can be said to be mighty. So when somebody accomplishes something big, they say what a mighty accomplishment. Now, so if you understand what mighty is, and that leads us to the Almighty. The Almighty stands for unlimited power. Having unlimited power, omnipotent. In other words, if mighty is having superior strength, superior power, the Almighty means having unlimited power. And so here we are talking about a God that has unlimited power, then He must show that unlimitedness now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Psalm 115 and the 3, Psalm 115 and the 3, but our God is in the heavens. He has done whatsoever He has pleased. Anything he pleased, he knows. He said, I'll show mercy on whom I'll show mercy. They can heal anybody. They can deliver anybody. He said, even the hair on your head are all numbered. This God I'm talking about has asked me to tell you, he will multiply you a thousand years. In Jeremiah 32, 26 and 27, Jeremiah 32, 26 and 27, then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? Listen to me, friends. 
What will happen where you are sitting yes, in a matter of minutes will make you know you are not deserving God in name. Did you hear what I just said? I preached my first visit in church in November 1979. And from 79 today, I've done nothing than preaching this one. If it's not working, I wouldn't be doing it. Did you hear what I just said? If it's not working, I wouldn't be doing it. It's working. Yeah. He told me he's going to multiply somebody here. Yeah. I don't know where to stand on your feet. Lift up your two hands. Lift up your two hands. Have your power. Go ahead, pray it us. Pray it us in a minute or two. Go ahead, pray the spirit. Jehovah, Jehovah, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit. against him is not being a fool. I would say a fool has said in his heart that the Lord God. This God can make somebody sleep and not wake up. The thing I want to say. This God, this God can do and do. That is the best thing I'm here to talk about. And that's why I'm excited tonight. I said I'll talk on four things. And the first one is to define what we are talking about. Second thing I want to do is to inform you that there are other gods. If there is the Almighty God, it means there are other gods. And many people foolishly think faith is ignorance. They think faith is not accepting the truth. They mean faith is trying to say that no devil. And first, stop deceiving yourself. That's a devil. Hello? Ah. There is a devil. The secret of any success is to know the strength of your opponent. If you know what your opponent has, and you know what it doesn't have, you can now boldly challenge your opponent. So if you know there's a devil, and you know where his limit ends, where his strength ends, where he can cross, then you will be in a better position to deal with the devil. So there are other gods. In Isaiah 37, 18 to 20, Isaiah 37, 18 to 20, of a true Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid with all the nations and their countries, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods. Then the works of men's hands, wood and stone, wherefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. Brethren, I want you to know there are other gods. There are witches. Tell you know there are witches. I know somebody will say, Pastor, don't talk about that. Talk about the great God. I'm telling you about the great God. That's why we're here. But I will tell you that are witches. Three months ago, May this year, in our neighbor's office, I was to preach, and there was a testimony that came that shook me. I'll tell you that another day. How many want to hear it today? Now, the long and short of it was that I was a man from the Polygamous family. And because, you know, Polygamous family, you have to hold your hand to excel. This other person in the church should not come out. And to do and to do and so what I've done. So this man got admission 
the top of that rock will go and study. And then they apply for scholarship and God gave them scholarship. And he was so excited. They sent him tickets and they kept them into his chest. That when he has arrived there, they will call and give the testimony that this is where I am. Went to the airport, entered the aircraft, the aircraft took off. And you know, you are flying from Nigeria to the US, for example. At a point, you need to remove your shoe. <laughs> if not, it could be uh, uncomfortable for you. A long journey. <laughs> so you move the shoes, the sled, the front foot, the head, and then one thing I wanted to go and miss himself, he didn't see one leg of the shoe. Wow. He saw for it, he couldn't see. Well, he reported to the hostess, they said, don't worry, when we come down, you see. Ah, the time my shoe is up. Eventually, when they landed, he stayed back. And then everybody came down, they checked, they never saw an issue. <laughs> and the people felt, we shall be doing the two shoes. How can the shoe disappear? I mean, what are you talking about? I'm sure. <laughs> and then, of course, you can't remain in the aircraft, so you have to come down. Mm-hmm. Coming down, and you know that when we come here, you, you know what I'm talking about. You are moving with one leg. Shoot, you have no shoe. The vision of this, I want it. It's all well there. What is going on? And my shoe in the aircraft. So they understood it and was accusing the aircraft officials for stealing the shoe. And so I passed this side. Not that sort of it. Send it back to Nigeria. A few weeks later, we visited the village with great people. And there were one of the women. Greeted me for coming from abroad. So he pretended as if I don't understand what you're saying. Which abroad? The Lagos, which abroad? They said, wait. And the one went abroad, the second day of the that disappeared in the aircraft and brought it to him. Stand on your feet. Somebody said, fire! He said, I mean, you witches and wizards. Belonging to me, that you have diverted, that you have stolen, that you have taken, I collect them back. Let the thunder go straight to God. 
11, 12 says, and right from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven, so very violence, and only the violent shall take it by force. It's haphazo by force. Psalm 50, verse 15 says, Psalm 50, verse 15, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. The Lord is saying, whoever calls upon him this morning in prayers, he will hear you, he will deliver you, he will glorify him. You didn't say it very well. In Psalm 55, verses 16 and 17, I love those two verses. Psalm 55, verses 16 and 17. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening, morning, and at noon, I will pray and do what? And do what? Keep quiet. You didn't say that. And keep quiet. So why don't you cry aloud? And then when you cry aloud, what will you do? He will hear your voice. Say, God will hear my voice. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. I'm laying the furniture that you know why we are shopping. Acts 2, 21. Let's read it together. What to go on? Shall be saved in the name of Jesus. Then look at Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Joel 2, 32. God is sending an instruction to us. And it shall come to pass. Shall we need together? What to go? Shall be saved. For? He's going to visit them tonight. Yeah. And look at the word of the Lord in Psalm 106, verse 4. Psalm 106, verse 4. And we're going to shout it. We will shout that word. Everyone, wherever you may you raise up one finger and say, Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have towards your people. Oh, visit me with your salvation. Are you ready? Now, what you do? Number one, if no, let me give you this advice. It's a prayer advice. In CAC, where I was born, whenever any prophecy goes forth, even if it's not for you, take it and bank it. It will work. You say amen louder than the owner. Number one, the Lord is saying, those of you at a point where you don't understand what God is saying again, shall be visited to not Number two, those of you who are planning to seek alternative help outside Jesus. Mm. And there is no help in Egypt. The Lord is saying tonight, on that matter, He will visit you in the name of God. Yeah. 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 Those of you who have been ridiculed heavily uh -huh. and mocked mercilessly shall be visited tonight in the name of God. Yeah. They don't want to see you in that place. Someone just hates you and that will be without any cause. You shall be visited in the name of God. Without answers, the Lord is saying tonight, you will visit you in the name of the Lord. Can you say a bigger amen to that? All those who are expressing evil trend, evil pattern that is not good in your family, you are suffering collectively. You are suffering uniformly in your family. Evil family, but a collective captive in your double Tonight, with a loud amen, the Lord will visit you in the name of the Lord. And I said, no, thank you, what he said to me. He said, he said, all those who are on the same spot for too long, after the order of that man by the pool of Besada, in your career, in your home, concerning what to carry, you have been on the same spot for too long. So let the Lord will visit you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will visit you in the name of Jesus. Do you know some people are receiving their miracles already? Then the person said, those who are depressed, Sick and tormented tonight, the Lord will visit you in the name of God. Number eight, when you said those who have become shadows of themselves, and you begin to doubt yourself, you are having low self esteem. The Lord will say, No, tonight, with a very loud you will visit you in the name of God. Those of you suffering from failure and end of success, you are suffering from the spirit of almost get there. And the Lord said to me that someone here, you have been failing a particular exam. You have been feeling that exam. You only have 
one option. Tonight, as the Lord lives and His Spirit lives, you will fail that there's only one. Jesus. Everyone say thank you, Jesus. 